Well yep. done. <sighs> we obviously spent a lot of time looking for fish. We both of us love our sight fishing. Obviously, you know, you talk a lot about the shader lens you use. The amber lens penetrators are my go-to. I use them for all my, all my fishing. I just find that it lightens up the water and I can see the fish a lot better. And it's once you train your eyes in spotting fish, it, it's amazing. You just have to sometimes just stand there and just be observant. You'll see it as a gray kind of smudge and then moving and they also will get on the side and they'll flash. And you can see the light underneath the belly. It actually, it's like a little mirror. And that's what I look for. My Polaroids, it's probably one of my biggest fishing tools. A little while ago, I had an article come across my desk destined for our sport fishing magazine. It was penned by Shannon Kitchener and he wrote about sight fishing Ludric and catching them on artificials. Now, having done a bit of that on trout before, it intrigued me so much, I thought, I have to go and do that. Now, on a New South Wales estuary, we're here with Shannon himself. We're gonna see what it's all about. We've already sighted a couple in the shallows, so it's gonna be a great day. Let's get into them. I don't wanna wait anymore. I've waited long enough, Shannon. Let's yeah, cast along. I started fishing from a quite a young age. My grandfather and um, father used to take me on hunting trips and we used to fish a lot of fresh water, the cod and yellow belly. Pop was obsessed with his Ludric fishing. So I used to go down and stay with him and fish off the rocks. And that was probably the first real style of fishing I learned. I've been able to establish an understanding of being able to see what kind of areas they will be in. So sometimes you might see the fish come in and out, but you'll know generally where they are. So I'll be looking for little washaways in the sand, back eddies, um, any scum line, because that scum line is a collection of food that's gonna be in the, the water column somewhere. So the fish will be actively feeding on that debris. So what I did from my years of uh, jig flicking for trout down in the snowies, I adapted the same principles, split shot, and a bit of an artificial fly. That was a bite. Yeah. Yeah. You just gotta try and do your best to, keep, to make it look washy, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at them down there. There's a lot of them on this rock, right at the base of this. Whenever you're fishing around ocean and rocks, safety's your number one priority. No fish is worth the health of you or your mates. And key considerations are obviously swell, so try and find a place where you're fishing out of the swell. And then the next part is rock safety. So look at the type of rocks you're fishing, choose adequate footwear. In this case, these are all smooth sandstone rocks. So Shannon and I are opting to go barefooted because we've got the best option of grip and feel of the rocks. Those rocks start getting sharp, put some decent footwear on, but always put yourself in a safe place. Fishing's meant to be fun, not dangerous. The fish have actually moved from that uh, point uh, where we are fishing earlier on. So we've come to the other side of the rock wall and we're fishing a, a back eddy. Yep. Up there. <laughs> Battling away. Don't let him get under those rocks. This is worth having a rod with a little bit of length to it. Yep. You've got to steer a little bit. And light line, Shannon, so enjoyable. Yeah. And when you hit them like this, actual target them as a sport fish, um, amazing. And there you go. Well done, mate. We got my first artificial caught Ludric, mate. We've obviously found a spot we have moved. Yep. Beauty of a technique like this, it's mobile. And it's easy just to pick up stumps and go and fish somewhere else. And we're obviously being guided by what we're seeing both in eddies and also moving schools of fish. That's exactly right. Once we find them, it's just working out your drift. Hang on from there. I've got a very good mate that I started with, Clinton Isaac. We started back in 1987. We we're both in year seven, going to school together. We'd fished quite a bit for, for trout and bass around the Nepean region. But Clint come to me and said, mate, I've just brought a fly rod. And yeah, I couldn't let him go out on his own. So I ended up getting a, um, a fly rod and we had basic kind of fly tying materials. Back in those days, there wasn't too much information about fly fishing. You know, a couple of books, a lot of American stuff couple of DVDs of Jack Dennis and so on. But basically we had to teach ourselves. Yes. Work, Shan. Nice one, mate. How about I go get a net for you? That sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Good work, mate. 
Most Ludwig guys know that the, you get two distinct populations, your ocean runners and then your, your upper estuarine ones, and the upper estuarine one's much darker, much whereas darker. look at that, it's just beautiful bronzy coloured fish. Yeah. Thought he was getting a bit of weed for breakfast. Yes, that's exactly right. Pinned him right in the corner of the mouth. Drift fishing is an intriguing approach and there's a few key parts to getting it right in terms of catching more fish. One is having direct contact with your lure or fly at all times and having a braided outfit will certainly help. And then it's also your weighting. So you want to be experimenting through the day in terms of getting that fly to different depths. Then it's a case of varying where you cast, how long you let it settle before you start your retrieve and keep varying that spot until you get a bite. And the moment you do get a bite, really important to remember exactly where you cast to and also how long you let it settle for before you started your retrieve. And what we're really trying to do then is just keep that fly moving through the zones that are most likely to hold fish. That is a game of memory. It's a game of experimenting a little bit with your weights. It's so important that once you've got that bite, just keep repeating that same drift. The float guys do it with their baits. It makes sense you're going to do it with an outfit like this. So once you've found the fish, the idea is to represent that weed flowing back in okay because that's what they're after they don't want a, a piece of weed flying past them they don't want it to be sitting on the bottom so you have to make sure that you have got the correct winding the correct sink rate so it's a thing of experimenting with the fly how it started i just went into spotlight and looked around and I found some merino wool, I found some tapestry wool, and experimented with mixes and colours and so on. Once I found that, just a basic blackfish hook like you would use on your weed, and I tied on and then used some Velcro to fluff it out, to, to unwind the thread, and that kind of makes it all puff, and I, the fish think it's weed, they love it. Yep. Yep, there we go. That's better. That's better. It's such a cool way to catch Ludric. After spending so many years chasing him on the float, which is a very addictive as well, watching those floats slowly go down, but to be just drifting a line through very often visible concentrations of fish, and so carefully watching that bit of braid, and suddenly it just ticks and you lift, and before you know it, before the brain's registered that you've actually had a bite, You've got drags getting pulled. This goes to show you, you don't always need a proper bait to catch them. If it looks like the real thing, you'll very easily fool them as well. Well, I'm sure scoffed that fly, so there's no doubt that it's a great imitation. And while Shan's getting the pliers, it's worth understanding a little bit about these guys because they're such cool creatures. You can obviously tell by their teeth straight away they're vegetarians. And they will eat the odd worm and yabby along the way, but they spend most of their time looking for any available vegetation. You might make a fly and readjust it yeah, half a dozen, dozen times before you get perfect. But when you get it perfect and you, know, you get those fish to, to take that artificial, it's, it's amazing. And I think that's the thing that draws me in. It's a whole complete process from start to finish. Well yep. done. <sighs> We obviously spend a lot of time looking for fish. We both of us love our sight fishing. Obviously, you know, you talk a lot about the shader lens you use. The amber lens penetrators are uh, my go-to. I use them for all my all my fishing. I just find that it lightens up the water and I can see the fish a lot better. And it's once you train your eyes in spotting fish, it, it's amazing. You just have to sometimes just stand there and just be observant. You'll see it as a grey kind of smudge and then moving and they also will get on the side and they'll flash. And you can see the light underneath the belly. It actually, it's like a little mirror. And that's what I look for. My Polaroids, it's probably one of my biggest fishing tools. Oh yes. Woo. The rods I use only a, like a two to four kilo stick. Nice and long, seven foot, little two and a half thousand reel, eight pound braid and um, yeah, that's all I need to use. Very nice. Very nice, good fight. Well done, Shannon. Ah, oh, they're such cool fish. Such a cool fish. See, straight in the corner, nice, nice hook set. Sometimes they do take them down deeper like your last one, but yeah, the, the bites are quite a uh, hard whack. Where are they? 
right up, right up in that shallow there. Up You'll, in here? Yeah, see, see him just on that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, got their heads out of the water. Yeah. This is very cool to see a school of Ludric in a foot of water up in the wave break. Yes, got him. You. That's what we're after. Side fishing Ludric in a foot of water. I hadn't have seen that. I might have struggled to believe it. And that is so very, very impressive. Big pack of 10, 15, 20 fish and just slowly working that little weed fly through them. Have one come and suck on it. The real beauty of sight fishing is you learn so much about fish behavior. With some of those retrieves, you know, you were going to get a lighter leader because we'd had a few refusals. Yeah. You wouldn't have done that if you hadn't seen fish refusing you. That's exactly right. And you can see the kind of habitat. It could be a little hole, a little bit deeper in the sand that the fish will be hanging around. Oh, look at that. That is an absolute beautiful blackfish, mate. And there's something you don't see every day of the week, landing Ludric on weed flies. And mate, on the beach. Yeah, <laughs> he's well over 40. And you can see the colour of them. That This is why they fooled me to start with. I was yeah. expecting to see the normal estuary dark fish, but they're not. They're so clean. What a beautiful fish that is. Mate. One of the more impressive fish I reckon I've caught in a long time, purely because of the way it's been done. Yeah, excellent, mate. No, I'm glad you, um, you come down to experience it. All I was off getting some photos taken of my fish. And just to prove how effective your technique is, Shannon's gone and banged one as well. Yeah, yours is still a little bit bigger. That's all right, mate. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll take it when I can get it. Yeah, fair but enough. I think on that note, we probably proved sight fishing Ludric on flies is pretty cool fun. It's very cool fun. Think outside the box. If you have had success on a different species of fish, on fresh water, salt water, mix it up. Give it a go nothing hurts that's how you know you, you you build your your fishing styles or create a new style of fishing you know, i've started doing um jig flicking for whiting but yeah you know, that's another story don't be afraid to give it a go